I want to begin just by acknowledging that just last night we got another reminder in Dallas of how dangerous and how critical the role of our law enforcement officers is. One Dallas police officer uh, was killed last night, another is in critical condition, and another also had to go to the hospital for his injuries. And I know the sheriff and I's prayers are with those families, and we want to make sure that our communities are safe and that our officers are safe as they keep our communities safe. And I really want to thank Sheriff Salazar so much. I'm incredibly proud uh, to have his support. You know, the safety of our communities is one of the most important responsibilities of any public official. And with Sh Sheriff Salazar and his team, they're really where the rubber meets the road. They have a sacred responsibility. And it's my duty as a federal official to ensure that law enforcement has what they need to uphold that responsibility. You know, that includes funding and resources. It also includes laws that keep them safe and keep our communities safe. I've supported efforts to make sure that our state and local law enforcement have body armor. I've helped lead bipartisan a bill to fund de-escalation programs so our law enforcement folks can train to prevent violent and deadly situations. I've worked to ensure that our police officers and law enforcement have the benefits that they need to retire with dignity after a career in public service. And in my hometown of Dallas, I've secured a half a million dollars for the Dallas Police Department to improve its management of online threats as well as repeatedly voting to dramatically increase the federal grants that are available to our law enforcement agencies across the state of Texas. Now, as the sheriff said, I was also proud to work with Senator John Cornyn on the bipartisan Safer Communities Act. This legislation is already helping to save lives. It's not everything I wanted, but it was a start. As, as I was voting for it, as John Cornyn was voting for it, Ted Cruz voted no. He voted against keeping dangerous weapons out of the hands of criminals. Ted Cruz is opposed to this, despite law enforcement officers supporting the measure. But as we also know, safety is a multifaceted issue. It also involves making sure that we have a secure border and that it's done in an orderly process. That means passing into law policies that would help with that, like the bipartisan border deal. It would have added thousands of border patrol agents, increased the number of immigration judges and invested in new technology to help stop deadly fentanyl at our border while also reforming our asylum laws. But instead of stepping up and working across the aisle with folks from both parties to get things done, Ted Cruz said no and took it down. He helped tank the bill that would have helped us secure our southern border. It's shameful. He will never work across the aisle to find solutions. And he won't ever help us deal with the real issues that will help us solve things like the border. He just wants to divide us. He doesn't care about the solutions. He just wants to point out the problems. And let me just finish by saying this before I take your questions. On January 6th, while Ted Cruz was whipping up the mob, and after he'd gone around the country lying about the election, on January 6th, I was prepared to defend our democracy. I took off my suit jacket and texted my wife, whatever happens, I love you. My wife, Allie, was seven months pregnant with our son, Cameron. She was at home with our son, Jordan, who wasn't yet two. And I thought I was going to have to hold a door on the house floor while my colleagues escaped. When that mob showed up, Ted Cruz was hiding in a supply closet. I don't say that because he should have been hurt by the mob. I said it because there shouldn't have been one. I can tell you this. I am standing here today because of the bravery of the Capitol Police officers, and the Metropolitan Police Officers in Washington, D.C., 140 of whom were injured that day. Several died as a result of the actions that day. Without their bravery and their commitment to their duty, I would not have met my son Cameron. So no one will ever have to tell me about the importance of law enforcement or why we should support them. That's also why I'm so proud to have the Sheriff's endorsement today. Thank you all so much. responsibility. 
And when we don't act at the federal level, we leave a vacuum. And so there are certainly some important roles that the Texas National Guard has played in helping us to secure the border. But ultimately, this has to be done through federal resources and with us providing the personnel and the funding and the policies that are necessary to have a secure border. And to do that, we have to pass smart legislation like the bipartisan border deal uh, that Senator Cruz voted against. To be very clear, that would have helped us hire more Border Patrol agents, more immigration judges, and had money for technology to help secure the border, which would help alleviate some of the stress that some of our National Guard troops are having to carry. Yeah. Why I'm here is oh, just because obviously this is incredibly important, and, and I want the folks here uh, in Bear County and San Antonio to know, you know who, of course, who I am and how I'll serve in the Senate. I'm obviously incredibly proud to have the sheriff's uh, support, and I want to make sure that law enforcement across our state knows that I'll be on their side, not just in rhetoric, but also in policy and in votes. How do you expect to get the Cruz voters over to your side? telling them what everybody wants to hear about the border, they're not listening. What is the plan to kind of gather the ones that want to come over? I don't see it that way. I see that this is a, a Texas issue, one that we have to have a Texas solution to. More than any other state, we're impacted by what happens at the southern border. My family's from Brownsville, uh, the very tip of Texas. My grandfather was a customs officer there. It's personal for me, and I want to make sure that we solve this. Ted Cruz has had 12 years, and he's refused to help us solve the issues at the border. When I'm there, I will. We'll do it in a bipartisan way, and we'll get it done. The border issue is a big deal for San Antonians because a lot of the migrants yeah, that's true. come through San Antonio. Yeah. How important is the endorsement from Sheriff Salazar? What does this mean to voters in our community here? Well, I'm incredibly proud of it because I think that our sheriffs are the ones who are, as I said, where the rubber meets the road. When we have uh, surges of migrants, when we have a crisis at the border, it's our local communities, both along the border and places like San Antonio, as you said, where folks pass through, that then bear the brunt of that. And so what we also had in that bipartisan Senate bill was funding to help provide funds for these communities for some of the expenses that they had incurred over the course of this crisis. So San Antonio would have been a beneficiary of that. Our border communities would have been a beneficiary uh, of that. Uh, and this is, this is what I fo want folks to know, is that when you take down a bill like that, you are also hurting our local communities, even if you're not directly on the border. It's the communities that are impacted all across our state. And so that's why it was so, in my opinion, such a common sense idea to do, and why I think it was a big mistake not to. Have you visited the Migrant Resource Center in San Antonio, and what do you think about the way the city is handling this issue? I've not been to the Migrant Resource Center here. I've been to several uh, processing areas, uh, I think in uh, Laredo and other places. Uh, but to me, you know, what we have to do all of this is a, a function of having a border that's not entirely secure and having federal policy that's not aligned uh, with helping us uh, here in Texas. And so everything else is in many ways a symptom of that initial issue. And that's what we have to solve. What did you think about Kamala Harris' um, interview today. yesterday on CNN? I didn't see it. I really, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. Can yeah. you guys you yeah, well, I, I, asylum is important, but asylum has to be done in a way that's consistent with, with our values. Uh, and the asylum process is broken. When we have about 90% of the folks applying for asylum who are going to be rejected ultimately, but it's going to take multiple years for that rejection, we have to speed that process up. There are legitimate claims that sometimes have to be heard, but that can be lost in a system that's broken. Well, it's, 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 it's the bipartisan so bill that we talked about, the changes that are in that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You Thank you guys so much. We appreciate okay. it.